Highball Bakers, with over 15 years experience working as a professional chef, I have definitely learned a thing or two along the way. Here are my top five pro chef secrets on how you can make a restaurant quality pizza at home. This recipe is my best ever pizza dough and it can be found on biggerbolderbaking.com. So the first secret is a really, really important one. People ask me, why is my dough so sticky? And that shouldn't happen. And I'm gonna show you how you can prevent it. Here I have all my dry ingredients, my flour, my yeast, my salt. Here I have my wet ingredients, my lukewarm water and my olive oil. Now here's what you want to do. I give you the measurement for water, but you might not need it all, or maybe you need more. So when you're making any pastry, any bread dough, add in, around 75% of your liquid, stir, and then see how much more that you need. By doing this, you will add exactly the right amount of liquid and not add too much. So here's the thing, your flour is gonna be different from my flour. It could be old, it could be new, you could live in a humid climate. So you just want to add enough water until your dough forms a ball and cleans the bottom of your bowl. You don't want a really sticky dough, you don't want a wet dough, you just want it to form together. So I can see that this is still a little bit dry, so maybe I do need the rest of my liquid. So I'm gonna add all that in there. You can also use your hand at this stage and just bring your dough together. So my pizza took all the liquid, but you know what? Do you see this here? It's still a little bit dry. Now, this is where people can go wrong. They can lash in some water trying to make that all wet again. Here's what you're gonna do. Splash, just a tiny splash of water. All we want to do is just lightly hydrate that flour. So there you go, look at that. I added all my water plus a splash extra and this is what I got. A ball of dough and a clean bowl. This is exactly what you want. If you get this, you've got a fantastic pizza dough. So now tightly cover your dough with some cling wrap and a nice clean tea towel. And what you're gonna do is let this ferment at room temperature for a minimum of 12 hours, but for a maximum of 18 hours. I like to make it the night before so it's ready the next day. So secret number two, crank up that oven as high as it'll go. Mine goes to 500 degrees Fahrenheit, which is 250 degrees Celsius, and that's the hottest that I can get it. The hotter your oven, the better your pizza. You'll get a lovely bubbly crust. It'll all be lovely. So here is my secret weapon for making restaurant quality pizzas at home. It's a cast iron griddle. And I put this into the bottom of my oven, let it get really nice and hot, and then I slide my pizza onto this. That means putting it onto the hot tray already will give you a lovely crispy crust and a nice bubbly edge. I'm gonna put a link on my website of where you can buy this. If you don't have one though, it's totally fine. Just put a normal baking pan in on the bottom shelf of your oven. So our next secret is something that people do have trouble with, shaping your pizza. Now I know it can be kind of tricky, but I'm gonna show you some really easy tips. So here I have my dough, it's nice and relaxed. And what I'm gonna do first is just go around the edges and form that crust with my fingertips. Trying to make a round. I know pizza doesn't always come out round, but just try. And then what you can do is take it into your hands and move it through your fingers. This is called driving the bus, see? Do, 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 do. Beep, beep. So you can see in front of your eyes, your pizza dough starts to stretch. Look at that. You can also go underneath with your knuckles and stretch it out a little bit. You just want to get it thin, not too thin, but thin in the middle and then still have your edge. So then just put it on the table and try and work it into a round. Now, this is a really common problem, but if your pizza dough keeps on retracting as you're trying to pull it, that means that the gluten isn't relaxed enough. So what you want to do is lay over a tea towel, leave it for five, 10 minutes, the gluten will relax, and then when you come back, it'll be so much easier to stretch it out. There's our pizza, and look at this. I want to show you something. So if you get any little holes in your pizza dough, don't freak out, it happens to the best of us. All you have to do is just pinch it with your fingers, and close it, and then move on with your life. Nobody will ever know what happened. Okay, gorgeous. I'm really, really surprised that I have for myself a round pizza, because <laughs> that very rarely happens. So pull it to around 10 inches or so. You don't want to go much bigger or it'll be too thin. So there you go, it's really easy to shape pizza dough. I know you got this, looking good. Now we're gonna move on to our next secret. So secret number four, I have this lovely, totally flat baking tray and I'm gonna put my pizza on this. Before I do, I am going to sprinkle it with a little bit of semolina. 
So semolina is durum wheat. It's kind of a coarse kind of a flour. And if you sprinkle this on your tray before you put on your pizza, it works as really good traction and helps to move your pizza from this tray straight into the oven. If you don't have semolina flour, you can just use regular flour, but I always like to have this in my cupboard. So now topping your pizza, trust me, less is more. You don't want to overflow it with toppings, otherwise you're not gonna be able to get it off its tray. So we're just gonna put a little bit of tomato sauce. This is my tomato sauce and the recipe is actually on my website. It's really easy. You can make it all in a blender with no cooking. Mozzarella. You know, it's one of my pet peeves when you go to a place to get pizza and they don't have your toppings and your sauce all the way to the edge. I love to put mine all the way out to the edge. And then simply we're just gonna to top it with some basil. Okay, lovely. There's really only one last thing to do and that's to get it into the oven. Secret number five, slide your pizza onto your preheated tray. Putting it onto a preheated tray, it will help crisp the base and it'll also get lovely oven spring. What oven spring is, is when you get that crust that's all bubbly and has popped all around, that is oven spring and that's what we want. This is gonna be like a Neapolitan style pizza. Also a little tip please, please don't open the door while it's baking. Just don't. Leave the door closed, peek through the glass, turn on the light, don't open the door. We want all of that hot air to stay in there for a few minutes. So while the pizza's in the oven, I'm going to answer a question I get asked all the time. Can you freeze the pizza dough? I don't recommend you freeze raw dough. It just won't come out the same. However, what you can do is roll out your base, put it straight into the oven with no toppings, cook it for around three to four minutes or so. You just want to get it to puff up. You don't want too much color at all on it. Then you can take it out of the oven, top it with all your toppings that you like, and then pop it into the freezer. Then you will have a freshly made pizza ready to go anytime. So I literally could not be happier about how this turned out. So come here to me, I want to show you exactly what we did here. You see how that crust popped and it bubbled? We did that by putting it on to a piping hot tray. We got that oven spring that we were looking for. Absolutely gorgeous. The cheese is lovely. You can see I bought all the toppings all the way out to the edge. So you get that lovely, almost little bit of like a burny tomato sauce. This is perfection. And if I just lift it up, and I tap the bottom. The bottom is crispy because of all that work we did with the tray. So this is pizza perfection. Oh, the basil's crispy. Mm. This is my go-to pizza crust. I've made it hundreds of times and I know that you guys absolutely love it too. Head over to biggerbolderbaking.com for the recipe and all of the tips. And please submit your photos when you make your pizza because I would love to see them. I'll see you back here really soon for more Bigger, Bolder Baking.